do if you don't like Europe? Then go back to Africa. If you don't like Canada, go back to Africa. If you don't like the United States, go back to Africa. Tell those people how ignorant they are. Be careful who you send home. <laughs> because if we sent you home, you wouldn't have one to go to because every place you are, you came and stole it from the black people who were sent. <laughs> if I'm wrong, prove it. <laughs> who were the first in Europe? The Grimaldis of Africa. Between 20 and 40,000 years ago, they came from Africa, your people, to this land. And through the process of time, amalgamated into different types of human beings. And so today you have the Asian, you have the European, you have the original African, but they all came from us. Has not their own research concluded that the mother, the central human mother of all people, came from the Navali culture of Africa? So if even your science from Harvard and your scientists from London approve, condone, and accept that a black woman was the mother of us all, if the mother was African, how can you send people home when Africans were first, which means wherever we are, we are home, and if there's anybody who's homeless, You know, a lot of y'all been asking me about all this testing that's going on with our children. Dr. Umar, what's with this academic testing movement? My kids are getting tested every month, every week, every quarter. I need y'all to know something about the testing movement. Listen to me well. This is an area of expertise for mine. These tests that they give your children are designed to produce a preconceived result. Did y'all hear that? To justify exclusion to opportunity and resources for your children. I know you don't want to hear this. That a system would be created to make sure that the African descent children don't do as well as the European descent children, but that's exactly what testing has always been. If you don't believe me, get a good book on the history of testing. And you'll find that the first test in Europe, the first test in America, were given out to do what? Decide who could go and fight and die in a war and who could stay home and fill out the papers. The first tests were decided who could get pregnant and who couldn't. The first tests were decided who was allowed to get married and who couldn't. Tests have always been used since the beginning of time in European cultural history. In America and in the UK, they have always used numbers <coughs> in tests to give the false assumption that this is a damn science when it ain't nothing but tomfoolery. <laughs> Listen to me. If every African child in the UK took a test tomorrow and got a perfect score, and every European child in the UK took that same test and failed it, what do you think happens to that test? next year. Do you think they keep it? No. But how is it that the black kids can fail a test and the white students do very well on and y'all keep that version? But if you ever get one where we do better than yours, you get rid of the test. Why do they do this? Because the testing is designed to do what the Jim Crow signs used to do, keep blacks out. See, y'all need to know something. If your children outperformed the Anglo-Saxon children of Europe just once, the whole academic world will go berserk. Because now, if he is smarter than her, if her reading is greater than hers, how do you justify so few blacks at the University of London? How do you justify so few at the various colleges? If the black kids are smarter or doing better on the test than the white students, you no longer have a justification of exclusion. You now have to answer why we ain't got more blacks at Harvard, and why we ain't got more blacks at medical school, 
and why we ain't got more blacks in law school. So the only way to keep the social order where it is, is to make sure the children of Africa don't do as well as the children of other groups. Now you're going to say, well, how do they do this? How can they make sure? I'm going to tell you how. In test development, there's something called standardization. Let me tell you what standardization means. It means I'm going to come to West London and I'm going to test an eight-year-old African-American boy with both parents at home. And then I'm going to test an eight-year-old African-American boy with only one parent at home. Then I'm going to test an eight-year-old African-American boy who doesn't live with either parent. I'm going to test an eight-year-old African-American boy whose parents are upper class. I'm going to test an eight-year-old African-American boy whose parents are middle class. Then I'm going to test an eight-year-old African-American boy whose parents are poor. Then I'm going to go to the seven-year-olds and the six-year-olds and the fives. And then I'm going to go up to the eight, to the nine, to the ten. I'm going to test the biracial African children. Then I'm going to test the multiracial African children. And I'm going to test the quadracial African children and the Tiger Woods African children. And I'm going to test the... <laughs> And then I'm going to use all this information because the information is called standardization. And standardization is a fancy word for meaning what? Pre-test. Did y'all hear me? I'm going to pre-test. And then once I pre-test, I know how well they do on all the questions because I already asked them already. And so how do I choose which questions go into the final test? How do I choose which questions Go into the final test. I know y'all don't want to hear this. I'm going to look at the questions that our kids did well on, and I'm going to look at the questions that their kids did poor on, and that's going to be my final test. I need y'all to know that they already know how your kids are going to score before they even test them. The whole thing is a sham. The whole thing is a sham. And y'all need to understand. You know, some of y'all like, so I want you to go to the library and get you a book on testing. Get you, a, not a big one, get you a nice little thin book on the history of testing. Or well, you ain't even got to get a book on the history. Get a book on standardized testing in school and read the history part. And read the modern part. And you'll see how these tests get made up. There's nothing fair about a test. You got a kid over here. He lives in the ghetto. He got the worst teachers in London. <laughs> the least amount of money spent on his education. And then you got the kid over here. Parents spend $20,000 a year on his education. He only got 10 kids in the class. But we want to put them in the same class and test them to see who the smartest. Now, how in the hell am I receiving an inferior education when I outperform a kid receiving superior? And let me tell you how they make sure our IQ tests stay lower than theirs. Stay with me. Most IQ tests have five scales. And when I test your kids, it's five IQ scores. We only talk about the overall score, but there's five. There's working memory, WMI, the working memory index. How well your child can hold information in their mind and use it, such as you do with math, such as you do for comprehension. That's WMI, working memory. That's universal. That don't discriminate based on culture. The next one is PSI, processing speed. How fast she can finish a problem. PSI. That's universal. There's no cultural bias in that. The next one is nonverbal reasoning. Do you know what that is? NVRI. That's when I give the child puzzles in blocks and I say, make this as fast as you can. This puzzle, solve this as fast as you can. That's universal. There's no cultural bias in that. You can give that to Koreans. You can give it to Anglo Saxons. You can give it to African Americans. You can give it to Native Americans. It's universal. But then the fourth one, the fourth one, this is the one y'all got to pay attention to. This one is what? V-R-I. Verbal, 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 verbal reasoning index. And do y'all know what that is? Those are the words that white people use that black kids have rarely seen before. Are y'all following me? I'm serious. On the verbal reasoning, they ask your kids words that they've never seen, never read, never used based on middle class Anglo-Saxon culture and experience. And you take the cultural words of someone else and give it to kids in mind. I'm telling you how they keep this 15 point gap between the blacks and the whites. Why is it that the white kids do 15 points better? Because of the words. Let me give you an example. 
I'm taking a test. Anglo-Saxon young man taking a test. We're on the same math problem. I'm a math quiz. But he does better on the math test than me, even though I'm far more advanced than him in math. How did that happen? Because the words they used in the question made no sense to me. So I got the question wrong, not because I couldn't do the work, but I couldn't understand the question. This happened to our kids all over the place. It's the vocabulary. It's the vocabulary, black people. It's the vocab. So there was a black man who got tired of it. He was a psychologist like me. And he said, I'm going to create a test to show that the test that we're getting from Europeans is a culturally biased test. He made up a culture test for white students. It was called the Black Intelligence Test of Cultural Homogeneity. The Black Intelligence Test of Cultural Homogeneity. And he gave this test to white kids and he showed what? That they also look mentally retarded on our cultural norms just as we look mentally deficient on their cultural norms, on the black intelligence test of cultural homogeneity. But the problem was, parents, he didn't get too far. And why didn't he get too far? Because when he showed up with the test and threw it on the table, and the white folks said, what kind of test is this? He said, bitch, 100? And they said, excuse me, sir? And he said, bitch, 100? And that's what the test actually stood for, the acronym, Black Intelligence Test for Cultural Homogeneity. And the white folks start running and everybody start running. And he never got nowhere with the test. But the point is, he was trying to make a point, y'all. That if you judge my kids on your culture, and if I judge your kids on my culture, they will fail too. So what the black psychologists have to do is we have to come together and create an intelligence test for our children that is culturally relevant and not based on somebody else's norms. But y'all gotta be careful, because where did IQ come from? Do you know who created the intelligence quotient IQ? An Adolf Hitler scientist. Do your research, don't believe nothing Dr. Umar says to you, because you're not gonna believe it anyway, unless a white person confirms it. So I want you to go to the library on Monday, and I want you to get a book on the history of IQ, and you're going to see a name, William Stern, 1912, scientist by Adolf Hitler, who created the intelligence quotient to justify the extermination of European Jews and 50,000 Africans living in Germany at the time of the Third Reich. That's right. That's the test we give your kids today. You mean to tell me we tested your kids based on a German Nazi concept? Yes, I'm telling you that story. You got to wake up and smell the coffee about this whole miseducation thing. Education is big bucks. You know how many people make money by miseducating your kids? And so what we have to do is create a system where we have our own educators. And if any of y'all interested in working at my school, send me your resume. And you don't have to just be a teacher. I don't want you to think narrow. You might do natural food. We're going to teach our kids how to make natural food. Because I would eat vegetarian every day. Problem is some of y'all can't cook it right. <laughs> Damn, it ain't got to taste like this. And some of y'all know how to make it taste like a Philly cheesesteak. So for the people who know how to make it taste like a Philly cheesesteak, I need you at my school so our kids can learn how to eat and taste good. Because just because it's natural, we ain't got to be nasty. Right? Some of y'all know how to sew. We got brothers and sisters who make clothing. You ain't got to be no certified teacher. You can come and teach our kids how to make their own clothing. What did John Henry Clark tell us? He said the people who can't even make their own underwear ain't fit to leave nobody nowhere. <laughs> so let's make our own underwear and clothing. Okay, some of y'all are good with computers. We need y'all. Some of y'all know how to fix cars. We need y'all. We got any sellers in here because we're going to have a marine program where we teach the young men and women if they're interested how to float ships so they can get their junior seller's license. We're not going to be playing. We're going to have ships, airplanes, you name it. The school going to be off the hook. But you can't stay that long. Because <laughs> you said. <laughs> so let me... Stratero, Vivance, Depakote, Zoloft, Risperdal, Paxil. 
Do you know that our kids did not start getting methylphenidate? Methylphenidate 